Okay, are you ready for some fun? This set of videos will be putting together a lot of what we've done, kind of a culmination of what we've done so far, uh, bringing everything together, and so it should be fun. But as usual, there are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot going on, and I see too often that students that are trying to learn this stuff sometimes try to hustle so fast through it that they miss something little, and then they end up spending an hour or two trying to figure out why their app isn't working correctly. And so just take it easy. We're going to get through all this stuff, um, but, it, but it needs to be done uh, in, a, in a perfect way, right, to make it run. It needs to have all the, the parts in place to make it do what we want to do. All right, so let's start by just creating a little folder. So I'm going to come into my C drive, which I apparently need to stop recording so many videos. Um, time to upgrade the drive. And I'm going to go to C users. Now, the, the significance of this, and then record is the account I'm using. The, the significance of this is that this is the place where I've been storing my .NET apps. And so I'm going to go into the repos folder, and we'll see the, all the apps that we've been creating in .NET. And then I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to refer to as front end. No, sorry. Front end is going to go inside of this folder. This is going to be full stack fun. So full stack fun. And then inside this folder, we're going to create two folders. One is going to be the front end. And one is going to be the back end. All right, so we're going to do both parts in this series of videos. So I've got those folders set up. So what I'm going to do is open Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to create a, well, I'm going to open a folder and then create the project. So I'm going to go into my source folder, into repos, and find that full stack fun. And I'm going to go into that folder, select folder. All right, now the significance of this is I can see both my back end and front end folder. So as I make changes, on either side, I'm going to see those changes reflected in these folders. All right, so I've got this set up. And then, just like we've done before, I'm going to go into the terminal. So, terminal. And I'm going to type in our command, um, which is npx create react app, right? And then I say, where do I want to create it? I want to create it in my front end folder. And then we're going to use the template, template TypeScript. And I'm going to cross my fingers that that's right, because I don't actually have it written down. I'm going off of memory here. So hopefully that's right. All right, so here we go. We hit that button. We're going to find out shortly if it's right. All right, so it's going to start installing those packages. And as we know, it takes a little while to get that done. So we are going to write in our front end folder a React app, and in our backend folder, we're going to open up Visual Studio here in a minute, and we're going to create um, our, our backend uh, stuff, <laughs> which is going to be an API. And so we're going to have the API load up information that the React app is going to consume. And so an API is just a, a basically the way I look at it is kind of a like instruction manual, uh, we, we tell the program how to interact with our program. So we're going to go set up calls and say, hey, if you want a list of movies, here's a call to do that. If you want a, uh, you know, a list of uh, people on the wait list for dating, here's that information. And we just post it out there, ready for the React app to consume. And then at the appropriate time, the React app goes up and grabs that data and pulls it down. And then it also can change, you know, send up data saying, hey, here's some data to go change in the database. And the two sides are going to work together. All right, so I was faked out there. I thought we were done installing, we're not. Hopefully soon. All right, so we're good there. So we've got our front end files installed now. Now I'm going to do a couple of things that we haven't done before. One is to go into the git ignore and make sure that our node modules folder is in there. That is a huge folder that uh, 
it takes a long time to, to download if we don't have that in there. And so we want to make sure that we're going to ignore that one. And then on the other end, when if somebody else is running the program, they can just run their own NPM install to go bring in all the files and folders that are in this, listed in this package.json file. And so all you do is just type in npm install. If you are the one receiving those files uh, through GitHub, it just it, it takes a long time. And so let's make sure in our note in our uh, git ignore file to have an entry for the node modules folder. All right, so that's one thing. The other thing we're going to do that we haven't done is install Bootstrap. So this is pretty simple. We just say npm install bootstrap because we're going to use the bootstrap grid all right so that gets installed but how do we actually get bootstrap into our program and so this is something we haven't done but if we go into our source folder into the index.tsx which is again the main it's calling the app component and there's the app component sitting right here right so it's calling this component. So it's the, the parent of this component, which is going to be our kind of our main element on the screen. And so we can add an entry in here that says import. And then what we're going to import is bootstrap. And then we want to go find the file. So we go into the folder, into dist. This is similar to what we've done before, CSS. And then we're going to go try and track down that bootstrap dot min dot CSS file that's sitting out in there. All right, so that should bring in our, and we need a semicolon at the end, that should bring in our bootstrap. And then we can set up our linting and pretty or just the way we've done it. So let's CD into the front end folder. So now we're in the front end folder. And what we want to do is uh, type in our little command that says npm install now prettier and ESLint should already be installed in our systems. So we're going to type in uh, npm install eslint-config-prettier and then eslint plugin, 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 uh, prettier, save hyphen dev. So two hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. We're going to run that. All right, and then we're going to build those two files. So we come in and say in the front end folder, we right click and new file. And our one is going to be called eslintrc. So sorry, dot eslintrc. I've seen people making mistakes with that. So dot eslintrc dot json. And in that file, we're going to put this code that we've put. And again, this is just kind of a little standard setup. We can make different rules but just to get this loaded up and to remind ourselves about it. So extends, and then in square brackets, we say react app is one of them, and then plug in prettier slash recommended. And then we'll make another entry for the rules, whoops, in quotes, R rules. Opening brace, and then prettier slash prettier. Opening square bracket, and then error, comma. Opening brace, and then end of line. Auto. Okay, whoops, in quotes. All right, so we're going to look like that. Save that. And then our other file we're creating is our prettier. So again, right click on the front end folder, dot prettier rc. And we don't need to put an extension on that one unless we want to. Um, so we'll open that up. And this one again, we'll just put some entries in. So the ones we've done, kind of standard print width 80. Uh, single quote true semi 
through tab width to trailing comma all and then end of line auto all right so we save that and now we've got everything set up and ready for us to to start building some components spencer out